Hey everybody, this is a continuation video on the GPIO 7 segment. So in the last video, we looked at how we are able to control the flipper and do GPIO output using push-pull. In this video, we're going to look at the code that we use to decide how to drive the 7 segments to actually display the numbers. All right, let's get started. And so there's different segments in our seven segment display, and I numbered them zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so when we wanna draw a three, for example, this zero segment is true, and then the one segment is true, and then the two segment is true, and the three segment is false, and the four segment is also false, and then the five and six segment are true. So that gives us, for a three, we would, light up this 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 and this and we wouldn't light up three and four those are both pulses and so this is kind of just a table of all the things we want to be able to draw zero through nine and then we put that in an array of booleans um, in a production code we could have compressed all these bits into one single byte so just for simplicity and avoiding bit manipulation we're just going to use an array of bools if you want another video, I can go ahead and make a leap video where we do the bit manipulation instead. Post a comment below. This draws two boxes, which are this box and then this other box. So that's how we're drawing the two boxes. And then we're taking the digit of seven times whatever number we want. So if it's zero, it would be zero times seven is zero. So we'll start at this first index, but if it was one, we'll do one times seven is seven. So what, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven puts us starting off here for our index. And so now we're gonna grab that value, which is a true or a false. And if it's a true, this question mark says, if this is a true, we're gonna use this value, A7 for our thing. And if this is a false, then we're gonna say lowercase a7. So that's what's displaying if this is capital or lowercase is based on whether or not this value is true or false. And so we go through and then the index plus plus means we'll currently use the value of the index that we calculated, but then once this is done, index increments by one. So on the next line, we're at the next spot and then plus plus the next spot. So every time we're doing this, we're moving one, one entry further in the list. So hopefully that makes sense. And then again, we have another one of these ternary operators where we're saying, is it inverted? And if it's inverted, if this is true, we're gonna write ground. And if it's false, we're gonna say 3.3 .3 volts. Here we're doing the digit and putting the digit here. So whatever number we picked, we put it there. We've already walked through most of what this is. This is where we're actually turning the pins on and off. Um, again, we're gonna calculate that index the same way. These are the pin numbers, remember? So A7, A6, A4, B3, and those are labeled on your flipper. And then we're doing that same digits and using that index and then incrementing the index for the next use of the word index, which is on the next line. XOR invert is a little trick. If invert is set to true, then you'll get the opposite of whatever is on the left. And if invert is set to false, you'll get the same as whatever's on the left. So if you have more questions, you can go ahead and look up XOR and that should hopefully give a good truth table and explain how that works. We talked about how we disconnect the pin at the end using the open drain. When we press the OK button to pick a new number, we're using this random get, which I believe is a secure random number versus like the rand function. So it, it looks to me like they're, they're using a secure RNG hardware device. So I think that this is a secure random number. We take that number and we divide it by six and we get the remainder. So the remainder is gonna be a number between zero and five. And then we add one. So now we have a number between one and six. The reason we're making a number between one and six is because I wanted this for a six-sided die. 
if you wanted a number between zero and nine, you could have said 10 and then add zero. And now we'll get a number between zero and nine. The add zero is extra at that point, so we could just do that. Make sure you change the comment as well, if you do that. Um, and then we are showing the digit and passing whether or not we're inverting. When we press the up key, we take our invert and it equals not invert. So if this was true, it's not true. So now it's false. And if it was false, it's not false. So now it's true. So this is a way to flip it. We could have also XORed it with true as we learned up above. Um, but I think this is a little bit more explicit in terms of what we're doing. And at this point, I believe we are done walking through this code. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have a seven segment display, it'd be great to try plugging it in and trying it out. Also, if we go to the definition of these pins, you'll see that these are the definitions of those pins that we're using. That's typically what you'll find you're using if you're doing external GPIO on the flipper with push-pull doing output for LEDs. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks a lot.